CDT codes for 2023. Following completion of today's course, participants should be able to recognize the structure of the CDT code, understand how CDT code is maintained, become aware of CDT code additions, revisions, and deletions for 2023. You'll also see example scenarios for successful coding that you can um, apply at your office to help raise awareness with your team. And you'll also learn to find uh, resources where they're located and, and how you can access to learn more. So where does the authority come for the CDT code? The CDT code's authority was established by the Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act of 1996. You know that is HIPAA. The CDT code is designated by the federal government as a national terminology for reporting dental services on claims submitted to third-party payers. And HIPAA requires that the CDT code is updated annually. However, caution is necessary to avoid any misconceptions of the meaning of the CDT being designated by the federal government. The CDT code is for recording and reporting of dental services. The presence of a CDT code, however, does not mean the procedure is evidence-based, endorsed by any entity, or is considered a standard of care or that the service must be covered by a dental plan. However, payers must accept a valid CDT code and adjudicate claims based on the benefit plans reimbursement policies. So what's a valid code? A valid code is a CDT code that exists in that year's CDT code book. Simply put, the CDT code exists for recording and reporting. If a provider is delivering care, it must be reportable without judgment on it being considered within the standard of care or uh, the existence of supporting evidence. So why do we have the CDT code? Well, the CDT code provides value through uniformity, consistency, and specificity that will reward you with the building of robust patient records, efficient claims processing, and timely reimbursement. So how do you go about selecting the proper code to use? Simply put, you follow the golden rule of coding. You code for what you do. Select the CDT code that best describes the uh, care provided regardless of anticipating coverage from third-party payers. For example, if a patient has incipient decay on the occlusal surface of an adult molar about an existing sealant, and you lightly clean it out and touch it up with resin sealant material, in that service, you would code D1353, sealant repair per tooth, and that is reported on the claim even though it may not be benefited by the carrier. In this case, you should never select a code for a restorative uh, procedure such as D2391, resin-based composite, one service posterior, with a reasoning that it's more likely to get covered, so that's the code you want to report. Again, record and report for what you do. So let's take a look at the three-part structure of the CDT code. The CDT code entry in this slide comes from, from the preventive category of services that illustrates how an individual code entry is structured. Why should you care about the components other than the five-digit code? Well, we care because the full nomenclature and descriptor help you decide whether a particular CDT code is applicable to the procedure that you delivered. 
So first you see the procedure code. That's D1110. It's a five character alphanumeric, alphanumeric beginning with the letter D printed in bold face. The letter D is an integral requirement of the code. Never use outdated codes that begin with a zero. If you know those codes, you're older than I am. Um, next is the nomenclature or name. The nomenclature each code must have, and it is written title of the procedure, and that's also presented in boldface type. Here we see prophylaxis adults. And then finally, there is descriptor or the description of what this service is. It's a numeric, it's a, excuse me, it's a narrative providing further definition of what the code is intended for. Descriptors are printed in regular typeface. Most but all codes have a descriptor, which when presented follows the nomenclature. So in this situation, the code is D1110 prophylaxis adult for the nomenclature. And why you would really want to look at this description, if we read it, it says removal of plaque, calculus, and stains from the tooth structures and implants in the permanent and transitional dentition. So you know that this code is appropriate to use around dental implants, as well as the mixed dentition. So if you have a 12 or 14 year old child who has a transitional dentition, in other words, has adult teeth present, then this is an appropriate code to use. And you've decided that by taking a look at the descriptor. So code sets use letters and numbers with assigned meanings that allow for digitized computer processing. It creates digital data useful in practice and claims management and with emerging AI technology. Like payers, you can analyze your practice data. Knowing your most frequently provided services will focus your understanding on the impact of a network fee schedule on your bottom line. Payers like Delta Dental assess submitted claims data to better understand market trends and manage their plans. So here we see from the Journal of the Michigan Dental Association from July of 2022, a table that reflects the top, I believe, 25 in order of submissions codes that Delta Dental um, adjudicates. You can create the same type of a report from the digitized data that you have in your practice management systems. So you know which codes you use the most. And therefore you can focus on those codes when you are looking at managing your fee schedule, managing um, basically your workflow and what is most important for what you provide in your practice. So how do codes get updated? Why do we have a code for 2023 that has changes? So the Code Maintenance Committee is responsible for maintaining the CDT code. As noted, HIPAA requires the ADA as the taxonomy's owner to review it annually and set an effective and expiration date for each version. The Code Maintenance Committee is comprised of members from coding end users that include five members from the American Dental Association, one of whom serves as chair, representatives from dental specialty organizations. Those are practitioners who are recognized by the ADA National Commission on Recognition of Dental Specialties and Certifying Boards, and members from the dental professions organizations representing practitioners such as the American Association of Dental Educators, and the Academy of General Dentistry. And of course, it has representation from third-party payers, 
as they are end users of the code. Action requests are submitted to address changes in technology that led to new procedures not described by any existing code. They exist to improve clarity and accuracy in the nomenclature and descriptors of codes. And codes are deleted that are supplanted by other additions and revisions. These requests require approval through a simple majority vote. The 2023 CD code, CDT code book has 800 separate codes organized into 12 categories of service. The CDT code has grown with the profession um, since 1989, when the first uniform code on dental procedures nomenclature was published in JADA, listing only 293 coding options. For 2023, the Code Maintenance Committee approved 38 maintenance actions, including 22 new codes, 14 revisions, and two deletions to make way for four new codes. So let's take a look in the following slides at the changes for 2023. Here we see a revision of both the nomenclature and descriptor. D0210, intraoral comprehensive services, um, series, excuse me, of radiographic images, a radiographic survey of the whole mouth intended to display the crowns and roots of all teeth, periapical areas, interproximal areas, and alveolar bone, including edentulous areas. So these revisions clarify the procedure's objective as a comprehensive survey. These revisions also acknowledge that it is the dentist who determines the appropriate number and type of images necessary to safely achieve the objectives based on the needs of the individual patient. Now, this revised wording philosophy is carried forward to the CDT codes uh, comparable procedures such as D0909, which is image capture only to enable teledentistry. The main thing is that we have the dentist now being responsible for determining how many films are required for a complete series, or in this case, a comprehensive series is now the nomenclature. And it is not that it must be 18 films or 14 films, it's what the provider determines. And how do you then, when you collect these comprehensive series of radiographs, report them? Well, one thing you're going to have to do is when reporting these codes, you should list the number of films captured or images captured on the ADA claim form using the quantity field 29B. Often practice management software uses the standard ADA claim form as a template for coding input to populate the patient's record and generate electronic and paper claims. If yours does not, check with your software vendor to find out where you are to input the quantity number. Here we see a revised nomenclature and deleted descriptor. A descriptor is no longer needed because all necessary information for code use is contained in the nomenclature. These revisions to D4355 clarify that this full mouth debridement procedure is delivered when a periodontal evaluation and diagnosis uh, cannot occur or must occur on a different date of service. The time interval allows gingival tissues to heal so that comprehensive periodontal evaluation, D0180, will have accurate findings, including probing and periodontal charting. Now, even though this says that you are not allowed, or it used to say that you are not allowed to charge D0 
150-160 or 180, which are all exam codes. You can code on this date of service using D0191, which is the assessment of a patient. This may be reported on the same day of service, but the comprehensive periodontal evaluation is reported separately on a follow-up appointment date. This will be addressed further in a scenario that we present. Not all 12 of the categories that organize the CDT code have descriptors. One that does is the orthodontics category. And this 2023 revisions uh, was, was prompted by CMC's 2022 deletion of the interceptive subcategory and all of its codes. So this 2023 revision to this nomenclature that goes with the category of service is intended to reinforce that there are clinical reasons for repeated delivery of limited or comprehensive treatment procedures. They are not simply to be billed once. So here we take a look at a revised nomenclature and revised descriptor in 2023. D9110, palliative treatment of dental pain per visit. And then the descriptor straight states that treatment that relieves pain but is not curative. Services provided do not have distinct procedure codes. These revisions clarify the report procedure's nature, scope, and intended outcome acknowledging that the word emergency is ill-defined and unnecessarily limiting, and that minor procedures are also ill-defined and subject to misinterpretation. The addition of per visit also establishes the intended period of submitting the service. Emerging technology necessitates new coding options as well. So in the additions this year, we're taking a look at these codes for tomosynthesis, which is a procedure that captures images from an array of focal spots utilizing a complex algorithm, and that it differs from single plane radiographic imaging that can now be reported using these codes for comprehensive bite wing and PA image capture. So those of you who have may adopted this technology have the ability to code it using these new codes. Additional actions are seen here with surface scan codes. These new surface scan codes enable greater specificity and recognize the inclusion of photographic in the nomenclature of the previous code that was deleted was limiting. The term direct means that the patient is present when the images are captured, and indirect means that the scan was done when the patient was not present, such as on a diagnostic cast. Many states now permit dentists to deliver vaccines, and public health officials encourage delivery of human papillomavirus vaccinations in the dental office. These codes allow for reporting to a dental carrier the delivery of each of these three vaccinations. D4286 is the removal of a non-resorbable barrier. And this is a new code basically to acknowledge that the removal of a non-resorbable barrier is a distinct service. So if we take a look at other new codes associated with this, we have placement of non-resorbable barriers that are involved with individual implant sites, and also with 
edentulous areas, the existing Pardon me, the, the, uh, again, with the new implant and edentulous site uh, codes for non-resorbable membrane placement, as well as the natural tooth uh, resorbable mem non-resorbable membrane codes that already existed, the removal of the membrane is a separate procedure that should be coded using the new code D4286. This procedure is reported per site. So those are the, K, the code additions for 2023. Let's talk about how we can apply these. So the following coding scenarios are not only informative on the use of the CDT code, you can use this process with your practice and with your team members to build awareness and answer specific questions they may have. So in the first scenario, let's talk about a patient with a periodontal disease or periodontitis. A patient presents with a chief complaint of sore and bleeding gums. His medical history indicates type two diabetes. He's a smoker of two packs of cigarettes daily and is taking glucophage metformin to manage his diabetes, and he takes a beta blocker to manage his hypertension. Also, his last dental visit, he relates, was five years ago. You assess the patient's oral condition and find that heavy accumulation of subgingival and supergingival plaque and calculus prevent providing comprehensive periodontal exam. So how are we going to code for this? The patient was seen by the hygienist that same day. He used an ultrasonic scaler to, breed, to debreed the supra and subgingival calculus and plaque from all four quadrants. And the patient declined local anesthesia. In this case, you can code for an assessment of the patient, not an exam, because that day you had to remove all of the supra and subgingival calculus just to be able to see and allow for healing to perform an exam. But you can code for an assessment of the patient, D0191. And then you would code for full mouth debridement to enable comprehensive periodontal evaluation in diagnosis on a subsequent visit, D4350, which is a revised code that we saw earlier for this 2023 CDT code that no longer has a descriptor. Since plaque and calculus precluded the comprehensive exam, again, you're able to report D0191 for the assessment. Remember, code for what you do even with the benefit plan, is not expected to cover that service. Additionally, you may report D1330 for oral hygiene instruction delivered that, at that appointment. And if you gave the patient medications to take home, such as chlorhexidine in your office, you may report D9630 drugs or medications dispensed in the office for home use. Now let's say that two weeks later, you had expected the patient to return for radiographic images and comprehensive periodontal evaluation. You've allowed for that period of healing. Here you would code for D0210, oral comprehensive series of radiographic images, and then D0180, comprehensive periodontal evaluation, new or established patient. And then in this situation, we documented that the patient's diagnosis is stage three grade C periodontitis with four to nine millimeter pocketing 
precarious involvement, mobility, and localized recession. Note that radiographs may be taken at the initial visit to document radiographic calculus, or you can delay to have them taken at the follow-up visit to best determine bone support and residual calculus following the debridement. Consider documentation with using an intraoral camera as well. Now I use a, a camera called Mouthwash, Mouthwatch, which is an intraoral camera that is affordable and plugs into your system to capture very nice images. But what if the periodontist patient is a no-show for that second visit? So the treatment plan was full mouth debridement on the first visit and then return on the 15th of the month, a couple of weeks later for comprehensive periodontal evaluation, but they failed to show up. Is it okay to still have billed D4355? And the answer is yes. You delivered that service with the expectation that the patient would comply with the treatment plan. Therefore, you do not have to go back to the carrier and say, I'm sorry, he didn't come back, so we're resending that submission. You provided that service on the date of service, you code for what you do, and you submit D4350. Now let's take a look at a single implant case scenario. Here's a patient with a long history of uh, care for tooth number seven following trauma. And after uh, repeated endodontic surgery, she now has a seven millimeter pocket around the tooth and your evaluation determines that it has a very poor prognosis. Therefore, you presented and the patient has accepted a multi-part treatment plan leading to a single abutment implant supported crown. So here we say that we're going to do the care in three phases. The first phase is going to be procedures and codes from several categories of service, namely oral surgery for removal of the tooth, periodontics and fixed prosthodontics uh, may be used, especially if we're going to use guided tissue uh, generation, um, membrane placement, bone grafting, and uh, if we're going to do perhaps a, a, a provisional, uh, provisional restoration. And in the first phase, you wouldn't do any implant services. And then in the second phase and third phase, procedures and codes would all come from the implant services. So how would we code for this? In the first phase, the tooth is removed reporting D7210, extraction of an erupted tooth. Bone grafting was reported using D7953, and the membrane barrier was reported with D4266, resorbable barrier membrane per site. So guided tissue regeneration and biological materials may have been placed. Other biological materials to aid in tissue regeneration, if used, can be reported using D4265, say if plasma-rich protein were uh, collected in place, or D7921 can, can also be reported for the collection and application of autologous blood products. The patient then received a provisional appliance, a flipper. And that single tooth flipper is reported from the prosthetic codes D5820. Next, we go to the phase two coding for this patient's treatment for the single tooth implant care. In phase two, following healing of the site, the implant is surgically placed. Implant placement, second stage surgery, and provisional crown are all coded with D6010 for the endosteal implant. D6051, we place an interim abutment so that the patient no longer has to use the flipper that they were complaining about. And D6085 
for the provisional implant crown. And then finally, we get to the third phase, which is the final restoration and custom abutment placement for the crown. Custom abutment fabrication can be coded with D6057, and then the abutment supported porcelain to ceramic crown can be placed and reported with D6058. If the implant was placed by a different provider and it requires subsequent surgery to uncover the healing cap and place a healing abutment, you may also code using D6011, which is surgical access to an implant body, second stage surgery. And reschedule following healing for the impressions or for the scan body where these services would then be reported. Now let's take a look at a scenario for an implant supported overdenture. A patient who has a 10 year old denture, it's been relined a few times, it's not fitting well. And they've decided to have two implants placed on the lower, uh, say in the area of 22 and 27. And then the treatment plan includes capturing the CBCT to evaluate the jawbone dimensions and the need for augmentation and to create a surgical guide. CBT image revealed enough bone to place these two implants. After placement of the implants, there were exposed threads noted necessitating bone grafting in a membrane. So how do we code for this scenario? First is the CBCT full arch, and that's recorded using D0365. And then we created uh, a radiographically guided index uh, to place the implant. That's by report, and that is coded by D6190. Then we record D6010 endosteal implant post placement, and that's reported twice, once for tooth number 22, once for tooth number 27. Bone graft, the same thing. If each tooth required bone grafting, each implant, I should say, then you would code D6104 for the bone grafting around the threads. And then you would, for the resorbable or non-resorbable barriers, report either D4266 or D4267 per site, 2227, for any resorbable membrane that is placed. And then the second stage, stage surgery and placement of the restorative prosthesis would entail coding D6011 for the surgical access to the implant body. Again, the second stage, stage surgery. And then D6191 for the placement of the semi-precision abutment on the implant and D6192 for the semi-precision attachment that goes within the overdenture. And then D6111 for implant abutment supported removable denture for the edentulous arch mandibular. That's the prosthesis. The denture gets coated with D6111 and the internal components are recorded using D6192 that fit over the attachment D6191. Also, it should be noted that over time, these attachments become worn, they become loose, they fail. The internal attachments can be replaced to secure or shore up the, uh, the fit onto the precision abutment. At the necessary time in the future, D6091 can be coded for the replacement of the replacement part in the attachment. Now let's talk a little bit about extra oral imaging. So extra oral imaging with a panoramic machine in new technology allows us also to capture bite wing radiographs. 
These take less time and effort and they provide patient comfort. Capturing diagnostic images for patients with special healthcare needs and even gaggers is facilitated by bite wing x-ray technology that evolves uh, in code reporting. How would you code for these extra oral bite wing images captured with your panoramic machine? Recognizing this capture is unique process from capturing a panoramic with distinct settings, not simply that you're taking a panoramic image and cutting it apart. So from the CDT codes perspective about what is a bite wing, a bite wing radiograph is an image captured after the procedure is performed and it does not refer to the armamentarium used to produce the image. So it's an interproximal radiographic view of the coronal portions of the teeth. And it is a form of a dental radiograph that may be taken with the long axis of the image oriented either horizontally or vertically and it reveals approximately the coronal halves of the maxillary and mandibular teeth and portions of the interdental alveolar septa on the same image. This is not saying that it is the armamentarium. You don't have to use a bite wing tab or a number two or number one film to capture this. And it can be captured by these machines. So if we take a look here, coding for what you captured, these two scenarios illustrate how the original image guides your documentation. If you used unique settings to capture two separate posterior radiographs, one for each side of the oral cavity, code using D0251, extra oral posterior image, and then you would document it twice one for the right side image, one for the left side image, similar to when you document bite wings for single, double, and four bite wing radiographs. If you simply parsed an original panoramic and cut it into bite wing sections, that's not a unique image. And you code for D0330 panoramic radiographic image. Now let's take a look at a scenario where a patient has an issue with an implant retaining screw and how we would remove it if it is fractured. Here, the patient presents with the complaint of an existing implant tooth that is loose. Because your radiograph shows that it is broken in the apical third. You recognize that to remove this, you're going to need a screw retrieval kit. You don't have one in your possession. It's going to require ordering special equipment. And it is more than just using the implant driver to remove a, a broken screw. As always, provide a narrative discussing this added effort when you are required to remove the fractured screw. Removal of a broken screw, D0140, in this case, limited oral evaluation was reported, and that's a problem-focused exam. Then D0220 was reported for an intraoral periapical image that was captured showing this broken screw within the implant. And then D0 Z6096, removal of the broken implant retaining screw was reported. Note that D6096 is a procedure that only applies when a screw is broken and fragments remain in the implant body and implant retained crown. Removal cannot be performed using standard conventional techniques, such as your implant driver. Now, what happens if the implant screw isn't fractured and the implant is just found to 
be loose during a cleaning appointment. So two years ago, a screw retained porcelain fused to metal implant crown was placed on tooth number 12. In today's visit, the patient was returning for cleaning and exam and four bite wings. Your hygienist noticed that the implant screw was loose and the crown was mobile and needed to be tightened. So the dentist proceeded to tighten the implant screw. Again, there is no code for simply tightening an implant screw. So a by report code D6199 is used. Note that simple tightening is not coded with D6080, which you might go through the code book and say, oh, I can use this. Well, that is used for implant maintenance procedures when removing a prosthesis for it to be inspected and to have it cleaned and to clean the abutments. In other words, an all on four case where you follow up a year or so later and remove it, clean it, and then tighten down the, uh, the screws. That is coded only when using a fixed prosthesis, inspecting and cleaning it. Again, when simply tightening a loose screw, use D6199. Also, you might code D6197, which is a replacement of the restorable restorative materials used to close the access opening. And again, in this case scenario, you would have submitted D1110 prophylaxis adult. You would have also coded for the bite wings that you provided and the periodic oral examination, and then the tightening of the screw using the by report code. D6199. Here is a replacement of an RPD abutment crown scenario. So I don't know if you've ever had a situation where a patient has a removable partial denture and they come in and you find that it has caries underneath the crown and removal of that decay shows that the tooth is going to require root canal treatment and the existing crown is no longer going to be savable. So following excavation, root canal treatment is elected, followed by replacement uh, with a post and core and a new crown to fit the existing partial denture. How do you record and report for this? Report the radiograph taken at the time of the exam that determine the need for care, but subsequent radiographic images taken during the endodontic care should not be reported. If we take a look, D3320 endodontic therapy would be reported for this premolar root canal treatment. D2954, a prefabricated post and core in addition to the crown would then be reported for the prefabricated post and core. Any pins that you place may also be reported separately. And then the crown D2750 would be reported. Now that crown's going to have to have modifications. It's not a standard crown. It needs to be made to fit the class that goes around it. Therefore, you can also report D2971, which is customizing the crown to fit an RPD frame. So that is additional, often overlooked code when you have this scenario for care. Also, it's interesting to note that payers are starting to provide enhanced benefits for patients with special health care needs. Payers such as Delta Dental of Michigan are providing access to dental care for children and adults with disabilities through enhanced commercial benefits. The condition may be congenital, developmental, or acquired through disease, trauma, or environmental causes that may impose limitations in performing daily self-maintenance and activities for substantial limitations in major life activities.
a key thing to report in a scenario like this, when you're caring for a patient with special health care needs, is to make sure that you report D9997, dental case management, for patients with special health care needs. Special health care treatment considerations for patients with physical, medical, and developmental or cognitive conditions resulting in substantial functional limitations or incapacitations, which results uh, and require modifications be made in how you deliver treatment and provide customized or comprehensive oral health care services. Using this code alerts the carrier that the patient is eligible for enhanced benefits. With the Delta Dental Program, several of these codes are benefited with increased frequency through this plan of enhanced benefits. These include periodic oral evaluations, oral, oral evaluations for patients under the age of three can also be provided more frequently, comprehensive oral evaluations, detailed and extensive oral evaluations, comprehensive oral evaluations such as for periodontal care, as well as other services such as cleanings, full mouth debridements, anesthesia. And also note that not limited to these enhanced services, but throughout their commercial plans, uh, conservative management of caries with silver diamine fluoride is also a covered service. So decisions concerning CDT code selection are up to the provider, up to the dentist. Dentists should always select the code that, in their opinion, accurately describes the procedure delivered to the patient. Again, the golden rule, code for what you do. To help you with coding guidance, coding American Dental Association at ADA.org, provides go, uh, guidance and, and guidance documents by coding topic and CDT code. There are videos and recorded webinars that you can view and posted materials that complement the CDT companion with coding scenarios. Also, contact with questions the ADA's third-party concierge service at 800-621-8099. The ADA third-party payer concierge service can help you with disputes and questions you have about third-party payment. Obviously, the best resource is the CDT 2023 kit that includes the code book, CDT current dental terminology with the ebook app, and the 2023 coding companion which has training guides for dental team to work with. And you can order that online at the adastore.org. Also be aware that come late November, there will be released the ADA CDT 2023 Current Tech Dental Technologies and Terminologies, I mean, book for 2024. Here's an important website that you can access without the use of an ADA number, and you can log into this content at ada.org forward slash publications forward class slash CDT. Here you can view CDT changes for 2023. You can access a glossary of terms and find guidance on the use of diagnosis codes. And again, this is open for access for anybody. You don't have to have an ADA number to log into this content. If you're seeking guidance on fees in your area, the National Dental Advisory Service Annual Fee Report Book, that's the NADSAS fee schedule, is a resource for assessing the fees that you charge. It allows you to compare practice fees 
with the 40th, 50th, 60th, 70th, 80th, and 90th, and even of the 95th percentile within a geographic area based on zip code. Another resource for ADA insurance resources is one-on-one -on -one assistance at the 800 number or by going through email at dentalcode at ada.org or dentalbenefits at ada.org. More online assistance is also available at ada.org forward slash CDT and ada.org forward slash dental insurance. The Michigan Dental Association also offers a continuing education continuum so that dental team members can become a certified dental business professional. This credentialing through the ADA is also very useful for team members who not only want to improve the value that they bring to their practice, but they want to have a credential that may result in greater compensation or make them more attractive in the job market. There are a whole series of continuum courses that are listed on the right-hand side. Each of them have testing that you have to pass, and then you can become a certified dental business professional through the MDA's credential. So that brings us to the conclusion of our presentation today. We went through that pretty quick, but I also know that you're able to go online to take a look at the additions, and hopefully you have already purchased the CDT Companion and the CDT Code. I hope that now you can recognize the structures of the CDT Code, understand how CD Code is maintained, that you've become aware of CDT code additions, revisions, and deletions in 2023, that the example scenarios for, self, for a successful coding were helpful and maybe pointed out some things that you didn't realize that already exist in the code that you've been overlooking, and then how you can find the resources for further learning. So again, CDT code update for 2023, the basics for successful coding. I thank you for your patience and for listening to today's presentation.